we're going to look at how we can uh, manipulate ecosystem uh, material coloration. Uh, on the screen at the moment, you can see a rock with uh, a few corals on there, which are essentially basically just the same coral, but we've manipulated the color so that we get a much more interesting ecosystem. So let's get started and uh, have a look at how we're going to achieve this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a rock and just check that we have it large enough so that we can see what's happening within our ecosystem. So let's make it a bit bigger. I'm also going to just resize my screen so that I can see what I'm doing. There's our rock and let's zoom in. So I'm going to load uh, a deliberately awkward material in. This is an underwater rock material that I made using layers and uh, an image-based uh, texture. So let's look at this material and we'll set up our ecosystem. So the first thing that you would naturally assume is that you're going to click on the top layer and you're going to add an ecosystem. But what has happened is we've simply replaced our purple layer with a with an ecosystem that's not what we want to do what we really want to do is we want to apply the ecosystem to the base material now let's add the ecosystem and we'll add a standard uh, view solid growth plant which is the red coral uh, for those of you with older versions of view this was supplied uh, with the view extras uh, nowadays you can only obtain the uh, aquatic plants via cornucopia 3d but i'm going to apply this plant and i'm going to try the population so the first thing that happens is nothing now i know that that's because this particular plant is quite large so if i reduce the scale down i can now get a population but you can see, even though the density is set at 50%, it's it's scattered at, you know very sparsely. Even if I raise it to 100%, we're still getting gaps all over the place. The reason for this is because the rock ecosystem is applied to the rock material. That means it will only be visible where you can see that material poking through the other two layers. To solve this problem, we're going to look up here. And we're going to look at these two buttons, the up and down button. So I'm going to move the rock ecosystem up in the hierarchy. And if I populate now, we've got a fully dense ecosystem. So let's reduce that back down to about 70 to get started. Populate. OK. So a couple of things I like to tweak before I get started. With corals, I like to drop them down a wee bit into the rock so we don't get that uh, trunk visible shall we say and I also like to make them perpendicular so let's go ahead and have a quick preview render see what we've got okay so we've got red coral which is exactly what we anticipated however for this exercise we want to get to a situation where we can vary those colors and control it more uh, dynamically so what we need to be looking at is down in this area we've got the uh, object list we have our texture maps you can see there the image base that I used and the third tab along which is the um, the tab that controls all of the materials and in particular the ecosystem materials down here so I'm going to go ahead and right click on the icon and opt to edit that layer so you can see we've got red coral, scale, etc, etc. I'm going to go ahead and look into the function editor and see what's going on. Now you can see that this is a very complex looking set of nodes. This bunch down at the bottom controls the bump. This little family up at the top controls the color. So because I'm looking at quite a large ecosystem, I'm not really worried about close-up details. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just delete all of that block of nodes. And I'm going to replace that with just a simple fractal. It's always a good place to start. 
and connect it on through to the altitude. So let's have a look at what difference that's made. Not a great deal at this moment, and that's because we have the texture applied on the object standard option. That means the uh, texture is associated with each of the instances, not the ecosystem as a whole. So I want it to become a world standard ecosystem. That means the material is applied across the whole of the ecosystem and you can see what a difference that's made already. It's much more dull, but we're going to go ahead and change that anyway. So let's look at the simple fractal. At the moment, it's primarily mid-gray, not particularly interesting. So let's interesting it up a bit and we'll increase the roughness. Let's see what difference that makes. Not a great deal again, but you can see we have some of the stronger reds coming through. We also have a much more patchy uh, application of color. You can see we've got some very pale areas. We've got some stronger areas. So we're already moving forward in terms of color. And we can also look at the color map. Now let's do a quick exercise and we'll just slide this slider all the way to one end. And you can see that the color has changed a wee bit. The red is not so strong. But what we're going to do is we're going to deliberately drop in, say about here, just click, edit the color. I'm going to drop in a ridiculously strong purple just so we can see what's going on. And let's render that out so we can just quickly see. So you can see already that the ecosystem is starting to change and it's starting to evolve. Okay, let's just zoom in on that rock so we can see a little bit better when we do a render. So we're getting some patches of purple, we're getting some patches of red, we're getting some patches of pale color. Obviously, you can go to any extreme that you choose to go to within this ecosystem. But at the moment, I quite like this. I might try changing it up to a higher, a higher scale just to see mm, that's too gaudy. So we'll go back down a little bit. We'll maybe go down to 0.5. He said trying to move the slider. Now 0.4. Remember also, we still have the option up here to edit the color further. What View has done is it's looked at all of the colors within that color scheme, and it's automatically calculated what would be the average color. So we can make that a little bit more pale if we so desire. Again, this is all dependent upon you and how you want your ecosystem to appear. But again, that's quite a nice result. We've got some good contrast between different areas. So what else? We've edited the, uh, the color. What we need to do is just reduce the bumpiness because that's affecting our perception of um, color. Uh, what have I got? 0 0.02 maybe. Okay, so that's going to soften things down a little bit. So once we're happy with our ecosystem, we can go ahead, click OK, rotate. I might zoom out a wee bit just for the final quality render, just so that we can see um, what we've achieved. And we will render it at final quality. This particular technique works for every kind of ecosystem that you are using, whether it be trees, whether it be corals, whether it be rocks, even through to cars and people. We can edit and change the color scheme of the ecosystem by itself. So now the final quality render is finished. You can see the effect that we've had just by changing the base color of one piece of coral within our ecosystem. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to check us out on social media and YouTube for further updates to view tips and tricks from Eon Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.